night, guys. Well, it is another cold, snowy, but finally a little bit of blue sky showing up here. On Sunday, January 15th, 2023, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization as I start to wind down my time in the Arctic wasteland of western New York. Uh, you know, guys, uh, <laughs> I was sitting here one more time going to, uh, for my today's chronicle of the collapse, I was going over there into that bottomless pit of doomsday sermons at medium.com, and I was going to read this thing from some doomer chick named Crystal Rivers uh, titled Please Stop Saving Earth for Your Children's Children. Man is the measure of all things. What if we measured wrong? And uh, I was going to blast into that, but then I looked over next door to this uh, post from this poor dude, Marie Jean Crebel, how medium doomerism helps to ruin my mental health. It has been months since my last writing, or even reading for that matter, here on Medium. The truth is, I just could not take it anymore. I surrounded myself with doomer writers and produced a lot of similar content myself. Is it a bear? Is it a bear? Is it a bear? My little doomer dog. She's incoming threats. Where was I? I surrounded myself with doomer writers and produced a lot of similar content myself. And to be honest, I still believe most of that. The math is clear. I am not that stupid, but, and it's a big but, I simply cannot afford those beliefs anymore. I need a, I need a, I need a, 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 yes, so anyway, I guess we can kiss goodbye, Marjan Krebel, I hope he finds some, huh? I hope he finds some hope on the cute cat videos. So, since I don't want to ruin your mental health by dumping the, uh, dumping the pot of doom called medium.com over your head, let's just go over to the good old mainstream media instead, where we're going to go over to this outfit I've had many rants from the conversation and we're going to hear from Shane Caulfield, who's a, some sort of scientist in biospheric sciences, and James Randerson, a professor of earth science. And they have a brand new essay out in the conversation here on Yahoo News in today's mainstream media for anybody trying to figure out all of the ways we're being lied to with the bright green lies. Yes, little dog. I think you can let the bear go. No, you don't need to be chasing the bear like that. Alright, so for anyone mining the uh, bright green lies, we're going to talk about carbon offsets. <clears throat> Take it away, Shane and James. I'm going to put the link on here. This is a long article. Prob I'm, I'm not going to get to the end of it. I'll read at least the first half. But you can go on the link and find the rest of this. 
Satellites detect no real climate benefit from 10 years of forest carbon offsets in California. Many of the companies promising net zero emissions to protect the climate are relying on vast swaths of forest in what are known as carbon offsets to meet that goal. On paper, carbon offsets appear to, appear to balance out a company's carbon emissions. The company pays to protect trees, which then absorb carbon dioxide from the air. The company can then claim the absorbed carbon dioxide as an offset that reduces its net impact on the climate. Is there anybody uh, who would believe this crap as it is? For anyone still suffering this delusion, however, our new satellite analysis reveals what researchers have suspected for years. Forest offsets, forest offsets might not actually be doing much for the climate. When we looked at satellite tracking of carbon levels and logging activity in California forests, we found that carbon is not increasing in the state's 37 offset project sites any more than in any other areas. And timber companies are not logging less than they did before. Huh. The findings send a pretty grim message about efforts to control climate change and they add to a growing list of concerns about forest offsets. Studies have already shown that such projects are often overcredited at the beginning and might not last as long as expected. In this case, we are finding a bigger issue, a lack of real climate benefit over the 10 years of the program so far. How forest carbon offsets work? Forest carbon offsets work like this. Trees capture carbon dioxide from the air and use it to build mass, effectively locking the carbon away in their wood for the life of the trees. In California, landowners can receive carbon credits for keeping carbon stocks above a minimum required baseline level. Third-party verifiers help the landowners take inventory by manually measuring a sample of trees. So far, this process has only involved measuring carbon levels relative to baseline and has not leveraged the emerging satellite technologies that we explored. Forest owners can then sell the carbon credits to private companies with the idea, the, you know, the unadulterated horseshit idea, that they have protected trees that would otherwise be cut down. These include large oil and gas companies that use these offsets to meet up to 8% of their state mandated reductions in emissions nothing to do with reductions in emissions. Forest offsets and other, quote, natural climate solutions have received a great deal of attention from companies, governments, and nonprofits, including during the UN Climate Conference last November. California has one of the world's largest carbon offset programs with tens of millions of dollars flowing through offset projects and is often a model for other countries that are planning new offset programs. It's clear that offsets are playing a large and growing role in climate policy from the individual to the international level. 
in our view, they need to be backed by the three best, uh, by the best available science. So we're just going to look at three of the uh, bright green lies buried in all of this. Okay. Our study used satellite data to track carbon levels, tree harvesting rates, and tree species in forest offset projects compared with other similar forests in California. Satellites offer a more complete record than all the ground reports collected at offset projects. That, us, that allowed us to assess all of California since 1986. From this broad view, we identified three problems indicating a lack of climate benefit from, you know, from these horseshit forest offsets. Number one, carbon is not being added to these projects faster than before the projects began or faster than in non-offset areas. Huh. Number two, many of the projects are owned and operated by large timber companies. Can you say the fox guarding the hen house, which manage to meet requirements for offset credits by keeping their carbon above the minimum baseline level. However, these lands have been heavily harvested and continue to be harvested. Number three, in some regions these projects are being put on lands with lower value tree species that are not at risk from logging. For example, at one large timber company in the Redwood Forest in Northern California, the offset project is only 4% Redwood compared with 25% Redwood on the rest of the company's property. Instead, the offset projects area is overgrown with tan oak, which is not marketable timber and does not need to be protected from logging. And so then, uh, you know, they go through there from their, from their bullshit hopium uh, about how California can fix this offset program. Uh, you know, throwing out uh, all these ideas uh, that ain't gonna happen. You know, it's, it's the ain't gonna happen bright green lie that, that, that I think is the biggest overarching bright green lie of all of these. This is the ham bone uh, oops, I don't know why I said that. Uh, this is the Collapse Chronicles uh, overarching bright green lie of the 21st century. It ain't gonna happen. You, you, you know, I'm basically talking about uh, the timber industry. Uh, the, you know, the, the timber industry uh, being more environmentally sustainable, whatever it is, you know, any of these things, uh, uh, all of these bullshit recommendations and what we need to do and, and, and all of these solutions and, and, and all of this, uh, that even if it were possible, which is a, a big joke, uh, even if it were technically feasible to do this, it ain't gonna happen. So whenever you're tr talking to one of these clueless moron, uh, apocalyptimists going off in your face, blowing off all of this hot air about whatever, uh, is going to save this planet, 
your response in 99% of the times, including this, ain't gonna happen. Okay. Uh, and I like how they talk about this and, and this and way down here in the article. Uh, the state protocol requires only 2% or 4% of carbon credits be set aside in an insurance pool against wildfires, even though multiple of these projects have been damaged by recent wildfires. There you go. Uh, the pool may soon be depleted as yearly burned area increases in a warming climate. Yes. So much for their insurance pool. Okay. Uh, let's move on through the hopium. Considering our findings around the challenges of forest carbon offsets, other than ain't going to happen, focusing on other options, such as sterilizing the human race, may provide more cost-effective, reliable outcomes. Without improvements to the current system, we may be underestimating our net emissions contributing to the profits of large corporate emitters and landowners and distracting from the real solutions of transitioning to a clean energy economy. Which brings us in to uh, all of the other bright green lies of transitioning into a clean energy economy. There is no such thing as clean energy. Okay? No such thing as clean energy. If there were such a thing, we're not going to transition out of the dirty energy and the biggest, uh, the deepest level of the onion if we ever really did discover a truly clean, green, renewable, limitless, free supply of energy, we would destroy this planet a hell of a lot quicker than we're doing with the inefficient, dirty energies we have now. This whole uh, race for this, uh, I, 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 I don't understand why it is so hard for even doomers to understand the worst thing we could do as a species is to develop a true, green, clean, renewable, free supply of energy. You would see the destruction of a planet go into overdrive. That at least as far as this carbon offsetting, forest offsetting bullshit Give it a rest. Ah, oh, Lord. And with that, I am going to uh, start thinking about packing up around here. I will be heading out on Tuesday to uh, get my snowbird ass down to Belize while I still can. Bye, guys.